Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, thanks to everyone for joining us this morning for our conversation with two of our friends uh, of the World Affairs Council, Ked Stanfield, Stanfield uh, mm -hmm. Executive Director of the Louisville Gross in Louisville, Kentucky, and Raul Valenzuela of Lima Compost in Lima, Peru. Yes. Uh, welcome. My name is Xiao Yin. I am the Executive Director of the World Affairs Council of Kentucky and Southern Indiana. We are a hub for international exchange, dialogue, and learning, and we are located in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we are part of two national networks, uh, Global Ties US and the World Affairs Councils of America. And through these two, we facilitate a variety of international professional and youth exchanges, uh, many of those through the US Department of State. And we also provide speaker programs and educational opportunity for the uh, Kentucky and Southern Indiana region throughout the year. So today we're going to be talking with Ked and Raul on the topic of sustaining the environment and growing our neighborhoods. One of the very bright spots of the pandemic quarantines across the world is how it has slowed and maybe even halted some of our impact on the envi natural environment and has possibly renewed our awareness of our individual effect on our surroundings. I think many people see, uh, have developed an interest in planting and growing their own gardens. I know I have, but I don't know how during this time. <laughs> and uh, especially as we get into warmer weather, especially in the US. So our two guests today come from very different parts of the world. Um, in fact, we have many guests uh, on this right now from Peru. And uh, we mm. may be going, yeah, we do. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah. And uh, we're going to be going into different seasons, but I think we have a lot to learn and to hear mm -hmm. from the conversation that Ked and, Ked and Raul is going to be having. Uh, before sure. we begin, I'm just going to do a really quick uh, note about our run of show. We are recording this webinar, um, and we will be providing a link to the recording after this program is over. We're going to have about maybe 20, 30 minutes of conversation um, and uh, with some, some questions if you submit it ahead of time. And then uh, after our discussion, we will have a little bit of a Q&A opportunity. So make sure that you submit your questions. You can do that anytime during this uh, conversation, uh, but certainly at that Q&A um, period. Um, and you can also ask your question verbally if you just raise your hand, we'll do that. So we're going to get started, and um, I just wanted to start the conversation by learning more about Ked and Raul. Uh, both mm -hmm. Ked and Raul um, came to know each other actually through a program that World Affairs Council had hosted two years ago through the State Department called the Young Leaders of the Americas Initiative. Uh, Louisville Groves was, uh, was the host, uh, fellowship host for Raul, who was a fellow on that program. And uh, starting with Ked, uh, Ked is the director, mm -hmm. as I said, of Louisville Grows. And uh, it is an environmental nonprofit organization and their mission is to grow greener, healthier neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, they foster green and just and sustainable neighborhoods in Louisville and seeks to be a leading organization advocating for health equity through the environmental platforms of urban forestry and urban agriculture. And, I'm going to have Ked talk a little bit more about what all that means in just yeah. a quick second. Um, okay. And then Raul is the co-founder of Lima Compost in Lima, Peru, which was established two years ago as a small business that provides the training and tools for indoors composting at homes and apartments. Raul says that he is no plant expert, just a very enthusiastic, mm -hmm. environmentally conscious guy. So let's start with Ked. Can tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about, about yourself and the organization Louisville Grows. Mm -hmm. What does all of that mean? Seeks to be, um, you know, advocating for health equity through environmental platforms, mm -hmm. and who do you serve? Yeah, um, so we work primarily in um, West Louisville and South Louisville, which are, um, you know, the parts of our city that um, have a low tree canopy, um, have some environmental impacts due to industry and, and um, kind of historical issues. Um, they're also, um, you know, the lowest income neighborhoods in our city. Um, and that's where we see the issues with, with food deserts. It's a kind of a buzzword um, people like to use, but essentially means that there's not as many grocery stores there as there are in other parts of the city. 
Um, so those are the neighborhoods we, we focus on um, and, our, and our two main environmental platforms are urban forestry and uh, urban agriculture. And through the forestry um, program, uh, we, we fundraise to plant trees in these neighborhoods on private property. So we are, um, you know, working directly with the homeowners to plant a tree in their yard. Um, and we try to get people set up for success. We give them, um, you know, kind of a bigger than normal size tree so that it actually looks like a tree as soon as it goes in. Um, we also give them a water bag, mulch, um, you know, tips on watering. We give people water hoses if they need them um, to make sure they can take care of the tree. Um, and on the urban agriculture side, we primarily work with community gardens. Um, and the way we do that is through a, a mini grant program. Um, a lot of community gardens aren't a um, they're not an organization they're not a nonprofit they can't fundraise or write for grants or accept donations so um, we kind of act as that conduit to to get needed infrastructure and funds to community gardens and, and we focus on things that kind of increase the capacity at a community garden or increase their sustainability so um, you know we've done picnic shelters and sheds and raised beds and soil and you know things that are going to last a very long time and either make the garden, you know, bigger as in it can have more, um, more gardeners there or make it more attractive to the, to the gardeners that are using it, or make it more functional, um, you know, for the gardeners that are using it. Um, and these things, you know, help people produce more food. So that, that's kind of what we focus on in those two areas. Raul, tell us a little bit about Lima Compost. Of course, yeah. Lima Compost is a small business. And I'm so, and I'm so so happy to be in this interview because uh, Lima Compo has grown a lot, especially since my visit to Louisville. Especially with when I when I partnered with Kate uh, um, two years ago, two years ago because it, it was on 2017. Yeah, uh, yeah, that time, a bit a bit of time ago. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, we focus on composting, but. Thanks to all the things I learned in Louisville, and when also when Kate came to visit here to to help us start a community garden in a low uh, urban in a in a low income urban urban slum, mm -hmm. we are also working on on community gardens, mm -hmm. and that is really important right now because uh, as Peru is a, is, a, is an underdeveloped country, there is a lot of poverty here. There are there is a lot of uh, uh, people that. Need need to work every day just to earn money and, and survive. So uh, with uh, with with the help of K with with Kate's help, we started a community garden two years ago, and now that community that that garden is benefiting uh, over forty families uh, with with uh, nutritious and healthy food made with a uh, homemade compost that the families also do in their in their in their homes. And well, during this quarantine, uh, it it has it, it has become really in uh, in handy for them to to grow their own food, and also they they can they can sell the the uh, some of them some some of the food. And what we are doing, what we are aiming right now, is to scale to replicate that that experience to the to bigger garden and other communities uh, but i was talking about lima compost but i i, I went to, to, to another place but yeah we're, we're a small business we we focus on composting uh, uh, we focus on uh, home composting but right now we we are also com uh, fo focusing on uh, working with companies working with municipalities because has our has we teach and provide services, knowledge, and products to do a uh, easy and friendly composting, nobody smells, a compost made in just seven weeks, a compost that can, make, that can be done indoors. Uh, the majority of our customers lives in apartments, as Lima is a really crowded city, and they, they will compost in their laundries. Uh, yeah. um, so we have take that method of composting, of friendly composting, and replicate it in, in companies. Because, and we are working with some 
transnational company like Procter and Gamble, it 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 offers in here in Lima. They are they are already composting uh, in their own factory with with some with uh, a, a ceiling a metal cylinder composter we we make for we made for them. Uh, but we have also uh, we're, uh, and we also have uh, this pickup service. Which, has, which was also Kate's idea when, we, when he was here in Lima. Um, uh, and we have, we have uh, more than uh, 1,500, no, 50, 1,500 customers using our clay composters. And in our pickup service, we have over 120 customers. It's, 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 it's still a small number because the logistics to pick up uh, mm -hmm. Weekly, it's in a city. Uh, it's a really complicated. Uh, you know, our com our compost site is located in the in a really urban part in Lima, because we can we cannot take this uh, this pick up, this food waste outside of Lima because it will be really expensive of the uh, spending all that money on the on the gasoline. And, and a lot of time, so we have to to compost like um, in like downtown Lima, so we can do it faster. We can uh, so we can uh, uh, save some money. Uh, well, well that, that's a, that's another thing to talk about maybe later. <laughs> but we are a small base, a small uh, a composting a small business that uh, right now we are working on on composting even in in, beer, in, in with companies. We have this pickup service, and we're uh, give, uh, we're giving a lot of efforts to the community gardens because right and right now, I think due to the to the crisis where the world is uh, is suffering, I think that community gardens are more needed than ever. Mm -hmm. I think that um, people that live in in, a, in, in in urban slums are really capable of starting their own. Community garden, they just, they just need the, the direction and the resources. And that's what mm -hmm. Kate um, gave us when he was here in Peru. And you know something? Um, right now in urban Lima, like in the middle and upper so economic classes here in Lima, they are buying a lot of, uh, maybe I'm getting the, the translation wrong, but cultivation table, maybe Kate? It's like a good table. Mm -hmm. that you can have in your in your in your apartments so do you can grow some food oh yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay so they are buying a lot of this oh. uh, family mm -hmm. families living in an apartment they are buying a lot of this mm -hmm. and actually we are we are also selling this uh, mm -hmm. and this is for me an indicator that families that has families are now spending a lot of time in their homes they are willing they are more willingly to 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 uh, to grow the young food, mm -hmm. uh, and also they 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 now have more. We have more uh, composting customers than ever. We uh, it's funny, but do, during the quarantine, each week, the number of customers that are buying clay composters and that are subscribing to the pickup service has has increased. Mm. Uh, but well, that, that's a bit like a quick picture of of what Lima Compo is doing right now. So that's really uh, one thing, uh, obviously, is very different from both of your organization. Ked's uh, organization is a nonprofit, um, mm -hmm. whereas yours is a business. Yeah. Uh, so you kind of alluded to the, the, the funding. How do you uh, get, so are your customers paying customers? Uh, are they paying for, for the pickup service, um, yeah. the equipment? Um, but whereas Ked's, you are probably based on grants and individual support mm -hmm. that type of stuff um how i mean how tell us a little bit more about that business side of it i'm curious in terms of you know how do you do people wh where do you get your profit i guess uh, how many people actually work in your in your business it sounds like a well, large yeah well we have a small team we are we have three three people three persons on the on our payroll and there is also a team of like 15 interns that actually we're really happy to give uh, to employ them because they come for they, they need the money especially during this time mm -hmm. i know some of them are 
as their parents are not working, they are supporting their home with the, mo with the money they are earning by composting uh, food waste from a lot of families here. But we earn, we, our, e our income comes from the, selling, the sales of these clay composters, the sale of our, we, ha we also do a wood and metal, metal composter that we sell to municipalities and companies. The families that are subscribed to the pickup service, they also pay a, month, a monthly fee. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about uh, $23 monthly. It's kind of crazy when you think that people are paying to, so you can pick up their waste. But that, that is the thing when, when you have like a, a, a niche, like, like a small mm -hmm. segment of a market that is really environmental aware. Mm -hmm. that, um, and that, that's where our, where our income comes from. But for example, when we did this project with Ked, the community garden, it was uh, found, uh, the, the money came from the, the US department because mm -hmm. it was a, a grant. And the, 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 interesting thing, the interesting thing is that uh, we replicate that project in two other public schools. It's, it's, uh, and it was also funded by uh, a, a, another uh, institution. So for me, the, the, the great thing was that um, we're, we're also starting to work with, uh, to, to replicate projects and the money comes from an, another institutions. And this was all thanks to the first community garden we, we did with Ked. And also when I was in Louisville, thanks to thanks to the fact that Kate took me to a lot of places and um, allowed me to see different business models, uh, I realized that uh, different incomes we can have as a composting business. Uh, the pickup service, the, the paid pickup service, is, is a business model that works in, in some cities in the United States. I don't think they, they charge that much as $23 because I think they, they, there they can have the, the, the opportunity to sell the compost. We here don't have the, that, that opportunity. But I, I, I was inspiring from that to, to sell the service here. And I would like it to, right now, this is an important moment in Peru because there is the, the government is making mandatory for families to segregate uh, waste. So families are, are now going to se separate organic waste from inorganic waste. And they are saying that maybe there is going to be a lot of um, people interested in starting a food waste pickup service. Mm -hmm. maybe, may maybe they will, but I know that it is going to be really hard because uh, costs here of moving uh, gasoline, of uh, renting a, 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 a site to do compost are really high. But mm -hmm. all of this, um, these are all things that I could figure out thanks to the experience I had in Louisville. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm really thankful for that. <laughs> that's great. Uh, great. Can... That's what the program set up for. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a great partnership, and uh, you guys did a, mm -hmm. it was a great um, example because Ked got to go to Peru and mm -hmm. help out with that garden, so it's probably the model exchange mm -hmm. uh, program yeah. that yeah. benefited hopefully both sides. Um, yeah. Ked, have you, uh, what about in, uh, during this time, I mean, people are not going out very much at all, um, how's that mm -hmm. affected you as a nonprofit? Because, you know, um, many of us all very much rely on mm -hmm. people. Um, have you seen um, an increase or decrease in certain things that you guys do with the kind of programs you are offering? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. where, where are there maybe maybe some new opportunities that mm -hmm. came out of this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we actually we, we've um, suspended all of our in-person programming that, that we do at our office, a lot of our educational programs. Um, you know, we just we just suspended mm -hmm. them. Um, and a uh, couple of we have moved online, so that's mm -hmm. been you know an interesting you know kind of twist to, to how we're having to do things um, and doing them more just like this, like as a webinar, um, you know. But we did 
so one of our main programs that we do in the spring is we have a plant sale. So we um, typically utilize volunteers, this year that wasn't an option, um, to start uh, about 25,000 plants and then we sell those um, you know, to the community, community gardeners, you know, whoever wants them. And we do um, primarily vegetables um, and we do some flowers. Um, this year we did, um, like that was, was timed with, um, you know, when the, the shutdown uh, happened. So in about two weeks um, before the, the plant sale, I had to scramble and put everything online. So I had to build a website from scratch um, and list out the 97 varieties of plants we had for sale. Um, you know, prices, sizes, it, you know, and I did this over like, like three days um, that I did all this. And as soon as the site went live, stuff started selling out. I've never seen anything like this um, in, in my time at Louisville Grows. Like, you know, every year we always have plants left over, which is fine because we donate them to community gardens and church gardens and things like that. Use them for giveaways, for outreach events. Um, this year, there was a couple flats of things that were left over, but for the most part, we completely sold out of everything that we had um, in, in two weeks. So it was, we, we got the website live before the, the sale happened, you know, before we had it scheduled, and we were already sold out of everything. We, we literally shut the website down, and I was still getting five and ten emails a day of, hey, are you going to get restocked? Um, you know, and, and I wish I would have been able to um, see that, that this, it wasn't going to get worse. That was our fear. Or I would have ordered more plants and, and restocked and kept it going. But we did 50% more volume of sales this year than we did last year um, and was our biggest year ever for this fundraiser. Um, so that was really good. Um, so that, that's something that, that, you know, like when we're talking about like, that's one of the things that came out of, of the you know coronavirus is that more people are um, worried about where their food comes from, mm -hmm. and and I, and I don't think it's as much of people have more time to garden now because um, I'm just as busy as ever. I'm just busy at home. I just don't drive anywhere. <laughs> um, but I really do think that people you know because we have had some some food shortages here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. due to supply chain issues. Um, you know, the toilet paper scarcity there at the beginning, <laughs> I think really got some people shook. Um, I think people are, are, you know, really starting to question like where their food comes from. And it's something yeah. we've done, you know, that's the work we do is, is we try to get people to question like, um, you know, is this, is this stuff you're buying from the grocery store, you know, as good for you as it should be. Um, mm -hmm. so I do think we're going to see some lasting effects, um, you know, from this and one of them being, um, you know, some stuff with the food systems. Um, and, you know, for, for our organization too, um, the kind of biggest shift we had was through our, our forestry program. Um, so typically we, we plant all of our trees with volunteers. So we have, um, you know, a couple hundred people will show up on a Saturday and we'll plant 150 or 250 trees in one day. Um, and since we can't have large groups, um, you know, we, we had to shift uh, a lot of our staff roles to accommodate, um, you know, planting trees full time. So I've got um, a four person planting crew that, that some of the folks were field people, some of them worked in the office a little bit more. Wow. Um, and now they're planting trees every day. So um, we're getting those in the ground and getting our projects completed, um, you know, but we'll see, um, you know, how it's going to go for, for this fall and, and, you know, what, what this looks like if we're going to continue you know, with this model or be able to, to adjust, um, mm -hmm. to, to start using volunteers again. Yeah, that looks, uh, that's, that's good news on the, on the tree selling. Uh, were those, mm -hmm. did you find that a lot of those were new customers or previous ones that just decided to do more support and, and buy more or? Um, so we, there were a lot of returning customers and we mm -hmm. see that every year, but mm -hmm. we had a huge amount of new customers that, that found us, um, you know, because we were advertising more online mm -hmm. and I think, you know, people bought from us that, that normally wouldn't have because we were, we were like the first group to have an online plant sale with curbside pickup. A couple followed after that. Mm -hmm. 
but we were one of the first to get it going. So I think that was that was um, part of why we were successful. Yeah, um, I I think you, it's interesting you say that the uh, some of this is not necessarily because people have time on their hands, but the fact that they're at home, I, I think they're just closer to the environment mm -hmm. of. Um, uh, and, and being much more aware, it seems like that there's been some kind of an increase in this, the, the consciousness of what you guys are doing. How do you think we can sustain this? I mean, I, I do, you know, don't you feel that there is an element of, you know, this pandemic kind of um, really cut out a lot of the noise of, of things mm -hmm. and make you focus uh, people taking a lot more walks mm -hmm. around their neighborhoods yeah. and noticing yeah. the greens. I do mm -hmm. that and seeing, oh my God, you know, my neighbor has a great garden. I want that. Um, mm -hmm. And then just that overall thought. But when things start opening up, I mean, do you think we're going to keep some of that awareness? Um, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts in terms of how do we keep some of this going? Even individually. Um, I, yeah, and I think the, the ways to keep it going is to, you know, and social media is so important right now um, mm -hmm. because everything is done online right now. You know, there's no face-to-face -face meeting. There's no, you know, I haven't even done a phone call. I've been doing all, all the meetings through, through, you know, Zoom or Google Hangouts or um, Skype, you know, like I've got all the different services now because um, we're working with so many different people. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, you know, keeping this up through social media um, and we've, you know, we've seen an increase in, in our followers on, social media as well. And I think that if we can keep, um, you know, this level of interest up and, and keep giving people content, mm -hmm. um, that I think we can kind of help, help continue this. And, you know, we're looking at different ways of, you know, getting information to people now. Um, and, and we're, we're talking about starting a, a YouTube channel and doing educational videos, um, you know, for, you know, tailor it specifically to Louisville. It's something that we don't have. You know, there's a lot of good information and, and resources and stuff for the state and through the agriculture departments and through the University of Kentucky, but there's nothing really geared toward, hey, if I want to grow tomatoes here in Louisville, which varieties do the best? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at kind of dialing yeah. it down to yeah. our little microclimate here and yep. saying, yep. grow this, not that, and here's how to do it step by step. That's going to be very helpful because I think yeah. most people who <laughs> start gardening, they don't know exactly. There are so yeah. many varieties. Where do I start? Um, uh, it is, and, <laughs> and I've been I've been gardening my whole life, but you know I'm the same way. Like there's so I you, oh my goodness, like blueberries. I planted blueberries this year, um, <laughs> and I started reading about them. I thought I knew a lot about blueberries until I started reading about blueberries, and I realized like I have nothing. I don't know about blueberries. <laughs> Oh my. And, you know, like, I still have questions that I can't find answers to. They may be stupid questions, but I don't know who to ask about blueberries. You know, the difference is that you know what questions to ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know something, something funny, Kate? We, yeah. are, we actually, uh, Lima Compost has a business. It's actually also selling organic uh, food. Organic we, food? Yeah, because we are... Um, we partnered with, uh, with uh, uh, farmers from the south of Lima. Yeah. And we offered the, their products, fruits and, fruits and veggies, to our pickup uh, um, uh, customers. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it got really well, well it was really, it, 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 um, it did great. It did great. And yeah, and, and, the, and, the, and the great thing is also is that, uh, we're we're kind of closing the circle because mm -hmm. the customers that are that are, that, are, that is buying that are buying the food they will give give us give us the the, the food scraps yeah and we will compost and the compost will be go Back again to the, to the farm. farmer yeah. yeah yeah we need to see more businesses do that oh that's that's fantastic but I I still need to to learn how to grow some things on of my on, on my own here at my house mm -hmm. if you yeah. if you start if you start your, your youtube channel with, which is a great idea yeah. i will be because some, i think yeah and I, louisville and lima has has similar weather i think don't you 
Uh, we get we get much colder in the winter. Much colder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We do. Yeah. We're not as lucky. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. we're going to, uh, it's about, I think we've had about a half an hour. What we're going to do is we're mm -hmm. going to start opening up for more questions from the audience. If anybody have any questions, please, or thoughts or comments, please uh, put them in our chat box or in the Q&A and we will pick them up. Um, while everyone's doing that, I'm just gonna ask if, I, you know, if you have any closing thoughts um, as we kind of end this conversation part of it, just in terms of, you know, and, and a lot of these you already addressed in terms of what we might do after this and, and how people are thinking about, you know, whether it's growing their vegetables or composting. Um, and I, you know, even doing educational um, videos, um, keeping that momentum going. Uh, what's something, just thinking about what's something that you've learned during this time that you can really, uh, that can really help you after mm -hmm. as we move forward because you know this may be a one-time pandemic it won't be the we only hope. time right we hope yeah. uh, we but hope. it may be recurring again exactly and it really yeah. tests all of our kind of resilience mm -hmm. of how mm -hmm. do you stay and how do you make yourselves relevant so um yeah. talk well, about I, that a little I think, bit i think um you know for me um you know i want to like personally and and professionally through, through work is um use this as a time to you know not not sit and kind of pine away and wait um you know till things get back to normal but to use this as a chance to to you know pick a new way forward um you know and thinking about um you know the 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 miles i've driven to go to meetings um you know pointless meetings i'll say uh, <laughs> You know that, that definitely could have been um, solved by you know Zoom. Uh, so this is one of the things that you know I think will will definitely you know continue is is more online things for our company. Um, but also I think you know with with um, you know this the the needs have been digestible information for people. You know the libraries are closed. You can't go get a book on gardening right now. Um, you know so people are are really focused more online. So I think you know, building out more online content um, kind of helps us make a new way forward um, to, you know, educating more people. You know, we can only have 25 people in a class, but, you know, I could have 100,000 views on a video here in Louisville and it'd be fantastic. Great. What about you, Raul? What are your takeaways? Um, uh, like, I have thought of, of, of what you uh, asked earlier about uh, how can we keep this, keep the, the, mm -hmm. good, uh, the, the, good, the good habits people are doing right now. Mm, I thought that if, I don't know, if, from, if a month from now, everything go back to normal, people will just go back to normal also. And pollution will be, ha will be big again and things like that. Uh, I think that, um, the government need to do some police policies so uh, so we can keep the, the good practices we are we are doing right now. Um, unfortunately, here in in our country, well, the, the government is not that uh, uh, efficient, so it will it will um, lay down on the on the on the people. I think that many people are seeing that um, spending more time in uh, in the environment or in growing food, even if it's in a small amounts in apartments, uh, can take to good, can bring some benefits. Like for example, uh, saving money eating more health, more, more healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and I also have faith in, in that people will, 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 will keep doing this because as we, are a, as we are a business and we live from the sales of our products and services, mm -hmm. we, we know when, the, when, our, uh, when our market is growing. So 
so has has we are seeing where we, our sales are growing um we know that this the this market is is also getting bigger i think people are realizing more than ever that um we need to be more sustainable with the environment uh and, but, but the, the thing i i get worried is that maybe that the speed of of increase will not be enough when <laughs> uh, it will not be enough that, that that's for me the uh, the my worry the, the thing i'm worried about mm -hmm. mm. but look that, that's it that's it <laughs> <laughs> well true i mean if there's one bright spot i guess is that it this at least puts a halt in all of our furious economic activity of just nonstop um, various pollutions and damage to the environment. At least it provides a little bit of relief and, and helps us to kind of think about it a little bit more, whether it sustains uh, that way. It'll all depend on wonderful people like you, uh, both, mm. and your organizations providing all those educational opportunities. Um, we're gonna go into q and A. I I have um, a couple of questions. One is from Maria. Um, it's, she says it's more a suggest, uh, suggestion more than a question. Can the new YouTube channel have videos on apartment food gardening? There are several channels that teach urban gardening, but they assume that everyone has a garden, which mm -hmm. is not real for mm -hmm. those who live in small apartments in cities. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, will, I will definitely take that down. I'm taking notes through this to some of the ideas I have. Um, <laughs> so I will definitely take that down as a note. Um, to talk about um, you know container gardening as well, I think that that um, that's something that we we're actually working on um, with uh, a couple other urban agriculture groups as we kind of rounded up some some leftover plants from nurseries and farmers, and we're giving those out and we're using um, some nursery pots that we have from our tree planting program to give people like a 15 gallon pot um, full of soil and to have it um you know um you know so they can grow a tomato plant they don't have to have a garden they can just here you go full set up so that's great because container planting it's a uh, i for one just seems a lot less work you don't have to dig up things in your <laughs> in your garden and it just seems uh, even for people who's got houses and property it's just seemed like one of those um you know kind of a mm -hmm. seasonal things you can take out and put away so yeah it's also uh, daunting to, to some people to, to, you know, work a long time on their lawn and say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to till all this up and make it into a garden. Exactly. Exactly. It's <laughs> yeah. kind of like the plant, yeah. uh, the beds and that people are trying to do. Mm -hmm. Great. So, uh, so Kes going to be offering some of those YouTube channel uh, videos coming to you soon in container <laughs> gardens. Um, <laughs> we had one question. Uh, it's, seems very specific. Um, should top dressing with compost and core mm -hmm. aeration be done, uh, be done to lawns each fall? Mm -hmm. I don't know who's going to That's for kids. That's for kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, just to, so core aeration is to um, use, use a, a small machine, a little bigger than a lawnmower that takes little plugs of dirt out of, out of your, your sod um and it, it leaves holes in, in your yard to um, kind of ease compaction and to let nutrients get down um you know to the roots of, of your grass um and if you do that and then add compost as a as a top dressing it the compost kind of fills in those little holes and you have like little nutrient plugs in your yard now and yes that's a great idea um to to do um most um uh, lawns are lacking in organic material in the soil um, by growing grass and mowing it every week, um, you're not adding any organic material to the soil. It, it's kind of a, a like a, a downhill slide slowly that it just depletes all of the nutrients in the top couple of inches of your soil. Um, grass is pretty shallow rooted and, and really takes up a lot of nutrients. Um, you know, we're not letting it be grazed with sheep that would, you know, poop in your yard and put those nutrients back in there. So adding compost um, is a really good way. Um, and, and a lot of people do it with peat or peat moss or, or a few other things. Um, but compost is usually more pH neutral and has a lot of other um, nutrients 
um, in it that, that's beneficial for your lawn. Right. Uh, I, I'm curious about composting. I, I feel like I've asked Raul this when you were in, um, in Louisville, which is the smell. How do you contain, or is, is that a, an, a, I don't know, a myth? No, <laughs> glad you're doing it wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, 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 tell us about that because I, you know, when I think about that, I think about what, what is it, um, the idea of just throwing waste into one big thing um, mm -hmm. and hope that, you know, for many of us who don't know really the science behind it, all that decomposing. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that, Raul. How does that, is it, is it a, is it the, is it the, the container that you, you provide? That, how does that work? Um, is that an mm. issue? It is, but I always like to say that the container you, you may, the container with you may compost is, mm -hmm. is doing just half of the job because mm -hmm. the other half is going to be, to be done by you. In, in, in average, you, uh, I, um, if you compost at your apartment, you will spend three or maybe up to four hours weekly, divided into, into days maybe, uh, because you have first, uh, you have to cut in small pieces, in, in, in tiny pieces, your food scraps. You have to also, um, once you have your food scraps, you have to mix them with uh, dry materials like dry leaves, like paper, like uh, cardboard. Uh, we, we use a lot of sawdust here uh, because sawdust will, will make, uh, we dry a lot of, of the organic waste. Mm. And especially because the bad smell comes from the, all the water, the organic the food scraps have. Mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. So we need to, to reduce that water with the sawdust, for example, so it won't smell bad. And, and also you have to, you have to, um, you, using a gardening shovel, a small gardening shovel, you have to, to uh, mix it up mm. once mm. every two, two, two or three days so you can air the, 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 the mix inside the composter. Mm. So the, the, the combination of the dry materials, which we use in abundance, which we, for example, for, 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 one, for, for one pot of, um, for one pot of food waste, we will use here like two or three pots of dry materials. So we, we use a lot of dry materials, so it won't smell bad. That's kind of the, 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 myth, mm -hmm. the, the process we do here and we teach uh, a lot of families, but the, the, the thing is that people, I think every kind of recycling takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. It is not that easy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. composting is also a way, composting is food waste recycling. It will take time. So mm -hmm. you, you, you have to conceive that you will spend three or four hours a week to do a, wow. do a, a, a non-smell composting. But of course, if you have a garden and you can, uh, you can you can have more if you have more space to to do compost you can uh, maybe tolerate a little bit of bad smell well but as i said earlier the majority of our clients are uh, families that are living in apartments so they right. they don't they can't have bad smell right well wow, this is really fascinating i <laughs> i can talk with you guys forever yes. about this because <laughs> We're coming into that time. Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to see if we have any more questions. And if not, mm -hmm. then we are going to um, wrap up our conversation. Um, and just want to thank you both for taking the time out this morning with us and um, sharing this really interesting uh, kind of conversation uh, that we have and uh, really trying to kind of get a better sense of um, you know, where we're going in terms of the environment, um, the bright spot, and then how we can sustain it afterwards and what we individually can do um, as uh, responsible citizens to, to do this. Um, we're, I'm sorry, there is one question before yeah. we go. Yeah. Uh, Kenny says, I stated I probably started seed and then planted them into an in-ground three feet by 12 feet area. Mm -hmm. uh, we also put a fence around the plot to keep out deer. 
His question is that the seed packets, tomatoes, peppers, beans, squash, and cucumbers, directions tell you to separate the plants by row, plants by rows, but in a three foot area, it's not easy to get the correct spacing. Any mm -hmm. advice? Yeah. Um, so Kenny, that's, that's a common uh, problem people have in small gardens or, or raised beds is that, you know, most seed packets and seeds were designed for people with, you know, traditional gardens and, and you know, long single rows of plants, um, but that's not an option in raised beds. And if you do that, you're wasting all kinds of good growing space. Um, so what we recommend um, people do is look, up, look into square foot gardening. Um, so with your three foot by 12 foot bed, you have 36 square feet of space. Um, and that kind of methodology is a way of, of kind of dividing that bed into, you know, one square foot plot and treating all of them differently. So, um, you know, like you would have one tomato plant in, in, in one square foot, but you would have, you know, um, maybe 10 or 12, I can't remember the exact numbers on it. Um, you know, green beans in that one square foot and you plant it really densely and you kind of grid it off. So everything stays separated. Um, but that way you don't have any weeds. They, they shade everything out. You, you maximize um, the, the use of the space in your small raised bed. Very, very good tips. So mm -hmm. you're going to have this type of information on your videos, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. It'll, We're it'll, all it'll, subscribers here. <laughs> it'll, it'll probably take a little bit to get it going. Um, right. I got to figure out how to edit videos and, and film things. So that's, that'll be new for that's me to a new learn. Skill. Yeah, that's going to be my, my, my quarantine hobby is learning, uh, learning how to, to, to make a YouTube video. Well, there you go. Um, well, yeah, we're going to, uh, we're going to have this uh, recording up um, after our, uh, our programs. We're going to be sending it over to everybody who, uh, who registered mm -hmm. today and also we'll have it available on our website. And in that email, um, we will be uh, putting out the links to both um, KEDS, uh, Louisville Grows, mm -hmm and Raul's uh, organizations. Uh, I think you can find more and maybe subscribe to keep um, posted mm -hmm. with what they're doing, anything that they're offering, yeah. both here and in Peru. And uh, I hope we get to have another conversation uh, sometime in the future, yes, maybe this please. time next year, and see what, <laughs> uh, what has transpired. Hopefully mm -hmm. at that time we are pandemic free. And, um, <laughs> and then we can have a, a great conversation about how everything's come back and everything's uh, just uh, everyone's still keeping their environmental conscious uh, uh, way of, of going about things. So thank you both mm -hmm. for, for joining us. I really appreciate the conversation. Raul, have a wonderful time and stay Thanks. safe because we know yes. that you have, uh, Peru is really hit by the, the virus right it is. now. It is, so it is. please mm -hmm. stay safe. And Kev, we will see you around. Um, you. Have, yeah, you absolutely. Having. Have a wonderful day, everybody. We will mm -hmm. see you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Kate. Bye, Shavin. Bye.